In this video, I'm going to show you how to bomb cover four out of the uh, gun tight offense. We're going to be taking a look at the constraint theory play uh, out of the gun tight formation. We've been doing kind of a little mini series showing you some really good plays out of tight. If you want to get my entire gun tight offensive ebook, make sure that you join the Patreon. It's only $10 to become a member. It'll get you access to all of my Mad 23 offensive and defensive ebooks, including the gun tight. We're in the Washington playbook today, and we're going to be talking about the play drive corner. Now, I believe that there are five key things to any offense in Madden. It doesn't matter what year. It doesn't matter what formation. You have to have these five elements, I think, to be very effective. The first thing is you've got to have some kind of bread and butter play, right? What is your bread and butter play? We talked about this the other day, uh, but for this formation, I really like this play. PA cross, uh, kind of a shallow cross style of concept is very effective against the meta, and it really puts the defense in kind of a bind. The next thing we need to do, though, is we've got to have some type of counterplay, right? Once they start to maybe run zone to stop our shallow cross, we've got to have some kind of play that is going to be effective, you know, against something like that. We talked about this yesterday, and that's why we like to play bench so much because it attacks the opposite sideline that the play PA cross does. Now we're going to be talking today about the third key, which is constraint theory plays, right? A constraint theory play is essentially, it's kind of a catch-all term for plays that are going to ensure sure that you are actually living in a perfect world. What do I mean by that? If your opponent is just spamming a match coverage, or if they're just spamming cover four zone, which is very popular for the way people like to defend tight, constraint theory plays are really effective for this. So what you're gonna see here is if I'm in baseline and press cover four drop, this play is going to give us a really good shot at being able to bomb the cover four drop zone over the top for a pretty big play, as you can see right there. So this is a really good constraint theory play if your opponent is consistently going to baseline press cover four to counter your offense. Or maybe your opponent is running a lot of match coverage. This is also a really good play uh, against match coverage as well in the fact that the rules against match coverage are actually different from the right side of a tight set to the left side. So you've got a chance to be able to get this ball you know, over there against a, mat, a potential match coverage, right? So you ensure that your opponent is... Um, you know, he can't just spam match coverage. He can't just spam zone coverage, right? He can't just spam the man coverage. He can't just spam the blitz, right? So when they start kind of over committing and they start doing the same thing over and over again, these constraint theory plays are super, super effective uh, for attacking for attacking stuff like this. Now, oftentimes, it's not always the case, but oftentimes um, constraint theory plays are also, it's very helpful if you can make these constraint theory plays quick snappable. What do I mean by quick snappable? I mean one hot route or less and you can quick hike it. So for the setup for this play, all we're going to do is we're going to quick hike. So we're just going to streak our tight end and we're going to snap this ball as fast as possible. And what we're banking on is that they're in some kind of double Mabel or they're in some kind of cover four drop or potentially even in match coverage. And we've got a really good chance at this thing being able to cook over the top of the defense. Now, we do have contingencies if we guess wrong. So, for example, if, you're, if your receiver just doesn't get open, right, then you can try this deep streak to the tight end with a one-on-one -on -one potential. But really what you've got to have is you've got to have some kind of like, okay, I guess wrong. And really the best way for people to counter this specific play is to run cover three. The problem is, if they run cover three, then what we're going to be able to do with this is we're going to be able to highball this tight end route right up the seam, as you can see right there. So this is kind of a contingency off of if they are over committing. Now, again, I did also say that this is really good against double Mabel. I'm going to show you why uh, real quick. What you're going to see against a lot of double Mabel coverages is they're going to have their flats on 30 and their curl flats are going to be on uh, five to try to take away the sidelines, basically. That's the whole idea of the coverage. If that's the case, which this is a very popular coverage that you're going to see, they're kind of relying on these outside or these quarter zones to run with these deep corners. And what you're going to see is this corner, this specific corner out really gives that, that defense a lot of trouble, as you can see right here. Now, one thing that your opponent can do to kind of counter this 
is if they go to a cover two uh, double Mabel style of defense, the deep half zones can play this a little bit better. But by and large, if you use free form, you're going to at least be able to give yourself a chance uh, to get that over the over to the sideline. As you can see there, he's able to defend it. So there's one little tweak with this that can make this one of the best zone killers in the game. So let's say that your opponent is running the double Mabel meta out of uh, cover two, right? All we have to do is this time, instead of streaking the tight end, what we're going to do with this is we are going to streak the left receiver. We're still going to snap the ball as quickly as possible. And what you're going to notice now is that deep half has to stay in the middle, and it allows me the window to be able to throw this over the top for a pretty big play. So constraint three plays are also plays that you can kind of tweak subtly to really take advantage of what your opponent is doing defensively. Now, the last thing that I did want to go over with you guys today is how do you use this specific play to be able to attack a basic meta man coverage look, right? What routes does this play do a good job of beating man? Well, if it is one-on-one, -on -one, you can always throw up an ad to your tight end. But this corner route is also pretty decent at being able to give you a shot against man coverage. As you can see right there, he kind of has a, that ability to light up against man coverage, just like he does against match coverage. I will say if they have KO abilities, that route in particular, um, I will say just from experience, is not perfect. Um, but it can, you see right here, it it has big play potential. It, ha it definitely has big play potential, and you can freeform that open in man coverage. But really the bread and butter play, because you got to understand that they're probably going to have some help over there. If they don't, right, then trust it. You know, all you have to do, real simple here, we're just going to freeform it down when he lights up. Of course, I hit the wrong button, so I'm going to throw a pick. Um, but all we're going to do is just free form it down uh, whenever that receiver lights up. We don't have to highball it, especially against man coverage. We're just going to free form it away from the defender. And what you'll notice with this play is free form down and outside. You see there, he can kind of get in a position. I got to click on a user that, but he can kind of get himself in a position. Now, the same is basically true uh, for match. So if it's match coverage, same kind of thing. As soon as he lights up right there, actually, because I have zone drop set, he's not going to light up. But you see how he gets in that soft spot. Super effective. Now, uh, the other thing that we have, though, let's say you don't want to be that risky against match, or let's say that they let's say that they go user it. The other thing that you have with this play is you have that speed out on the left side. It's really good. But really, the best man beating route is that route right there. So if they bail to go to the tight end, or if they bail to go to the corner, that little crosser right there is going to be super effective for you guys against man coverage. Gun tight attacks the meta in so many different ways, and constraint theory plays are super important because they ensure that you're you're living in a perfect world, a world where they can't just have all the time to make all the adjustments they want to make, a world where they can't just overcommit to your constraint and your counter plays, which is basically defending the sidelines, but now they have something that's going to get over the top of their 30-yard cloud or you have something that's going to burn match coverage, right? That is super important. Constraint three plays can come in all shapes and sizes, but this is an example of one out of the gun tight. And if you want to get more Mad 23 uh, content on the gun tight, make sure that you join the Patreon. That's where we have all of our eBooks, including our gun tight. 10 bucks gets you access to everything. The link is down in the description. If you want to go check that out, be sure to hit that link. And thanks for watching.